Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the uh, second session of LFMTP. Uh, for this session, we'll have two talks. So uh, the first talk is an invited talk. It will be given by Elaine Pimentel. So can you hear me, Elaine? Yes, yes, sure. I, I hear you fine. Great. Um, so I see that the audience is uh, quite disjoint from the audience this, this morning or rather this afternoon in Australian time. Um, so uh, just a recap of a um, couple of rules for this online session. Um, so if possible, uh, you can turn on your video to give you impressions of you know, being present uh, to create a, an atmosphere of interactions. Um, so please mute your microphone if you, if you haven't done so. And uh, for questions, you can use the uh, raise hand button. For some reason, I can't see it now, but uh, if earlier it seems to work, if you click on the participant list, there should be a raise hands button. Uh, I will be chairing the session and I will monitor the, um, the chat windows and the, um, the participant list in case uh, someone wants to ask question. Um, so um, uh, first, let me introduce Elaine. I guess uh, she probably doesn't need a lot of introductions. So she's been uh, <clears throat> very active in, in the areas of logic and automated reasoning. Um, so Elaine is currently a full professor at the um, uh, Unif uh, Sorry, Len, if I mispronounce the university. It's okay. Name. In English, it will be Federal University of, of Rio Grande de Norte. Perfect. Uh, close enough. Okay. Um, so, uh, so Elaine will be talking about uh, linear logic as a logical framework. So, something that she's been uh, working on for a long time, and and you know, it's it's, it's great that uh, she's able to give the talk today. So without further ado, I will pass on uh, the session to Elaine to begin the talk. And uh, Thank again, you. I'll in chat, and if you have any questions, uh, raise your hands or type in the chat windows and I'll relay that to Elaine. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ali, for the very nice introduction. And thank you all for, uh, for the invitation first and then for being here. Um, for you all, it's what, it's like 10 in the at night or something like this? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a 10 p.m. here in Australia. Yeah, well, nice <laughs> for, <Thank> you. for you. <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, so um, I, I, as, as Owen said, I've been working with this for a long time now. So um, actually, to be honest with you, uh, I, for, for quite some time now, I'm trying not to work with that anymore. But then uh, talking to people and then uh, people have, you know, insights, different kind of insights about this kind of work. And so I, I came back working with that um, last year. Uh, and this is, this is a joint work with uh, Carlos and Carlos is my main collaborator for quite a long time now. And uh, Bruno Xavier, Bruno is a, is a PhD student of Carlos. And uh, yeah, so this is, um, he, this is part of his, his thesis actually. So this is something that we've been working lately. Uh, the work I'm going to present now, it, it has been accepted to, uh, to a conference, well, a workshop called LSFA. Uh, it's a Brazilian conference, a very nice one. At least I like it a lot. So, um, so let's go. So yeah, so as Owen said, I'm going to talk about linear logic. Uh, and uh, the good thing about linear logic is that, you know, it's, it's really elegant in the sense that, oh, first of all, it deals with resources and uh, while classical log logic is more focused on truth and intersynistic logic is more focused on truths and uh, linear logic has it all. Uh, so it keeps really the elegance of classical logic in the sense that it, it can gather all the dualities that one would expect from a uh, classical logic, uh, let's say. So negation is evolutive, and then you have a symmetric uh, sequence, and uh, uh, the, the, the connectives, you can interdefine them using the Morgan. 
Uh, so in this aspect is really beautiful and elegant, uh, the same as classical logic, let's say, but it has the constructive kind of uh, view inside of it. Um, since you can, you can embed linear intuitionistic logic inside it, right? So I, I like it a lot. And of course there's the models and everything, everything. It's written there, the models are simple. I don't know who put this there. It was not me, I mean, but well, they're simple enough. I mean, one could at least can understand the thing. Uh, and the, 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 the big deal about what makes uh, uh, linear logic capable of encoding both uh, classical and indigenistic logic is the use of exponentials. So uh, when you have, you have two exponentials uh, called uh, Bingo and question mark, and uh, when you have formulas that are marked with them, then you can use contraction and weakening. So here I put the weakening and uh, contraction. So here, um, although I said that, you know, you have dualities in the sense of uh, left and right, for example, for sequence systems. Um, because of that, you can decide to have a two-sided uh, kind of uh, system or one-sided. So for this talk, I'm going to keep the one-sided for the meta level and two-sided for the object level. And I'm, I'm going to show you why in a, while, in a, in a short while. So, um, so yeah, so every time you have a formula that is marked with a question mark, you can either uh, weaken this formula if you're, if you're only uh, one-sided sequence uh, or you can contract it. So bottom up, what you're going to do is can, you can duplicate the formula or you can just erase it. Um, on, the other, on the other hand, uh, if you have the, 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 the rules for the relation and promotion in linear logic, they look a lot like T and four in motor logic, right? So here I put the, the, the rules one-sided uh, for uh, their, uh, for T and for four. So for T, what you do is uh, actually you, you, you keep a copy of the modal rule that you have and you do, uh, you make an, an extra copy without the modality in front of it. And this is T. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about it later. Uh, and for what it does is uh, if you want, if you have a box formula and you want to take off this box bottom up, what you do is you can do it, but then you're going to forget about everything that is not there is not um, there is not with a diamond, and the diamond is persistent, so it, it stays when you go bottom up. So these are actually the the rules for the relation and promotion in linear logic, more or less. Uh, so the relation is nothing else than bottom up. You 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 make a copy of the formula without the question mark in front of it, and promotion is just you take off the bank but everything has to be question marked or ev everything has to be classical in the context. So it has more or less the same, let's say, spirit, right? So more or less uh, exponentials in linear logic has, they have the spirit of S4, uh, modal logic S4, the classical modal logic S4. Well, as for modalities in uh, modal logics, uh, also exponentials, they are not canonical in the sense that if you decide to have different colors for your modalities, for, so for example, red and blue, uh, they're not equivalent anymore, even if you have the same rules and have everything, right? So it happens also with uh, multimodalities in, in classical modal logic. So this is the thing. So if you have, if you decide to, um, color or to put on a label on your exponential. So here I put red and blue, then you cannot prove that these two things are equivalent, neither for the bank nor for the question mark anymore. And this opens the possibility of having much more um, uh, uh, connectives, right? I mean, you may have one uh, different connective for each label that you think in your head or color or whatever. So. This opens the possibility of having what has been called sub-exponentials. So sub-exponentials are nothing else than multimodal, multimodality, let's say, for, uh, for modern, classical modal logics. So the nice thing is that uh, you, can, you can organize these labels in a pre-order. Uh, you, actually, you have to do that if you want to have uh, cut elimination. Uh, and uh, this has been done by Dano and uh, Joannier and uh, Schlinix and, uh, in 93, so a long time ago. And uh, the way they did it is, that, is like, um, so you, you, have, you, you may have the same things that you as you have in, uh, in, in the exponential. So you, you possibly have contraction and weakening. You may have both for neither or one or, or the other. 
but you have to assume the religion and you have to assume uh, promotion, right? So you necessarily assume T and four, but you possibly assume C and uh, uh, or contraction awakening. So uh, as, as we are dealing with uh, some sort of, you know, modalities here. So why, why not, uh, why only contraction, weakening and T and four? Why you, you don't think about K and D, right? So K is the, uh, is, uh, the, the rule K is uh, this rule here where it looks a lot like promotion. You, you can promote the box only if you have, uh, if you have diamonds and all the, your contest is always with diamonds, but then when you move up, I mean, the diamonds, they are not persistent. You, you forget about them when you move up in the proof. And a D is, uh, is just, uh, just says that uh, box implies diamond. So is, you do the same, you promote here the diamond and not the box. So it's the same thing as K, only uh, the formula you're going to promote is not a box for the diamond, right? So why not this, uh, this axioms as well? So people thought about this. So Guerini, Massini, and uh, Martini in 98, they actually, they did that. They, they, um, they deal, dealt with a system that it called, um, it, it's called two sequence. Uh, and um, yeah, and then they allowed it there that, you know, the modalities in linear logic would have this or that flavor, uh, not only contractional weakening T and four. So you, you could possibly have all of them. So I put all of them here. So C, W, K, T4, and D, okay? So uh, this is the first go of this talk. So I'm going to, to uh, we're going to talk about sub exponentials, but not only having T and four and maybe contraction and weakening, but also T, um, sorry, K and D as well, okay? So this is, this is not, you know, this is not original of the, uh, I mean, I'm just, saying that I'm going to do the, this in, in linear logic with sub exponentials. It's another presentation, so not uh, something new. Then uh, how about, so I, I, I said some things about uh, linear logic, about exponentials, about sub exponentials, and what about catenation? So catenation is all about duality. So the rule for cat is this one. So you're going to cut one A with, uh, with uh, another way, A, right? So if you have a two-sided sequence, one A is going to be on the right, the other is going to be on the left, but if you have one-sided as I put here, then you're going to cut A with, uh, with the, uh, the dual of A, right? So the proofs, uh, so Gensen, of course, uh, introduced sequence and also cut elimination. And uh, his proofs are based on uh, bringing this duality of the cut row inwards until you get to atoms and then you eliminate, eliminate the cuts. So this is how you do elimination and Allagensen, let's say, right? So you have a problem here again with modal logics and why? Uh, because uh, the, the, the modal rules, they're not duals. I mean, you don't have, uh, you don't have a left and right rules for, rules for box, for example. You have one rule for box and that's it, right? So you don't have this kind of duality. You still can do elimination. But in the case of box for, let's say, S4, or K, uh, no, S4, no, for K, for example, you don't have a principal case. So it's always going to be a non principal case, the case of box. I mean, you're going to switch the, the cut uh, downwards. Uh, and the reason is that the uh, rule uh, for K introduces box and diamond at the same time. Uh, so this is the rule for K again. And uh, this is the same with promotion, right? I mean, promotion does the same. but uh, in promotion, you have also the religion that does the, the balance of the thing. So the religions go, uh, while uh, promotion is going to, to have, to be the, 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 the rule for bank, you have the rule for question mark that'll be the, the religion. So now you have the duality and then you can move up uh, all against and proofs, let's say. So the second goal of this talk is to show you a uniform dual sequence based system for modal logics, for example. So we're not going, we're not going to stay into sequence, but we're going to move up a little bit. But doing that, um, well, we're going to be able to, um, to have this duality back, let's say. And this is going to be a capture in the meta level as uh, we're going to see um, shortly. So, so let's, so we're talking about 
linear logic, uh, exponential, sub-exponential, scalination, and what about framework, right? And so this is the, 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 the a workshop for, for frameworks, right? So logical frameworks. So I'm going to use linear logic as a framework. So, so uh, why linear logic as a framework? So this is a, um, this is a story that you know comes from a long time ago as well. So for example, with uh, Eliano and uh, Frank Fanning, but also they and I, so I did my PhD on this. So using linear logic as a framework. And so I'm just revisiting uh, this right now. So um, the first thing is that, as I said, linear logic captures duality. So it's a good kind of framework because you know we can capture in a nice way dualities that comes from sequence systems. Um, it also is a, a resource conscious uh, logic. So I can talk about you know consuming resources and producing uh, some other things. So I can I can talk about transition systems and uh, you know rules actually right inference rules. Uh, it has very nice extensions based on it and very well studied with machinery and everything. So um, we can use all of them for reasoning about them, uh, and this is good. And uh, when talking about linear logic with sub exponentials, this has been used like a lot uh, for for you know for specifying different things or systems. So for example, uh, different kind of contexts as uh, Giselle, uh, Vivek and I uh, did uh, some time ago. Actually, this was uh, Giselle's master uh, dissertation was on that. And then, oops, uh, sorry. I don't know how to come back to that. Uh, I'm sorry for that. So uh, also we can talk about uh, different kind of um, temporal, epistemic and uh, special modalities. So this is the part of uh, relating uh, sub-exponentials with concurrency. So this is a work uh, I've been doing with Carlos and Vivek. Uh, we, we did a lot of work on that and it was quite nice. And then we went one step further and we could even talk about soft constraints of preferences and probability and this kind of stuff. It was really fun to do. Uh, Giselle and Kostov, they talked about that they could use linear logic with sub-exponentials to encode bigraphs. And also, Carlos has a lot of work, a lot of lots of works on uh, using linear logic uh, for biological and multimedia systems. And uh, the problem with that, I mean, it's really nice and it's uh, neat, let's say. Um, but the problem with that is that you know, uh, when you when actually when we talk about this, when we are specifying other logical systems, not only you know computational or concurrent systems. When you come, we, we come back to logic. So it's really not easy to specify logical systems in linear logic, some logical systems in a very natural and direct way. Um, sometimes it is, but you know, so for example, for mod model logic K, <laughs> I don't see a nice and direct way of doing that. Or you move to cell, you move to sub exponentials and then you have very complicated encoding. So um, the goal, the third goal of this talk is to show that, okay, I can enhance the, the, the examples I can deal with linear, linear logic, we're going to put sub exponentials because we, we cannot do things without it and being natural and direct. But uh, yeah, so the, 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 this, this encoding is not going to be easy to do. So if we, I'm not going to do that, but if you compare with, uh, for example, using uh, linear logic with sub, sub exponentials for encoding S4, for example, so Vivek did that and it was, it, it's beautiful, but it's really complicated. You need like uh, dummy sub exponentials and this kind of things. We're going to avoid all that. Um, and so uh, the last part of the talk is going to be devoted for uh, presenting you meta level criteria for cut elimination. So this is coming back to my PhD thesis, but you know, doing a different setting, let's say. So back then in 2000 and I defended in 2001, I think, <laughs> um, we had, uh, Dave and I came with this concept of cut coherence that would be uh, when you specify a rule in linear logic, uh, you would have a head and a, and a body. And this body has, if this body has a very nice structure that we call cut coherent, then, uh, then the, the whole system, I mean, if all the, the, the the pairs of uh, rules for the connectives, if they have this property, they would have uh, cut elimination, right? And cut coherence is nothing else than, you know, measuring at the meta level, the duality of, of formulas. 
So it's it's a kind of harmony, if you wish. I mean, the concept of harmony, um, the 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 the, um, the uh, inference rules for uh, one um, uh, connective would be a harmonical. And uh, the proof of contamination that we have back there, it's, it's a really nice one because it really internalizes uh, the proof that Genson had or has for, for his systems at the meta level. How do we do that? I mean, we transform the object level cut to the meta level. So we're going to have meta level cuts plus these bodies here uh, that are dual linear logic formulas. Then we proceed to meta level cut elimination. So we eliminate the meta level cuts. So we're all the only thing that is going to be left are the bodies, but the bodies are duals. So they disappear when they're together, they're going to produce bottoms, so they disappear. So this is the, the beauty of the thing. So you transform object level uh, cut elimination to meta level plus bodies, but bodies are well beha behaved. So they, they kill each other, let's say, okay. So, so yeah, so this is a, this was really simple. Uh, the problem with this is that uh, when, first of all, I mean, when you, you know, specifying logics, object level logics and producing dual or cut, cut coherent uh, clauses at the meta level, it's not an easy task. I mean, it's, you cannot do it with every single logic. And uh, if you enhance and put sub exponentials, then the cut coherence becomes messy. I mean, I think, I'm not sure Giselle can tell me uh, better afterwards, but I think we had like a two pages description of well, how the thing works or the theorem would have a, you know, a two pages uh, uh, statement. So it's kind of complicated, right? So we are going to avoid that. So we're going to have a simple criteria, criteria with sub exponentials, which one? The same I had with, uh, Dale and I had in our uh, TCS paper in 2013. So, so this is the talk. So four goals and the goals are this. So we're going to show uniform sequence based systems, sub exponentials with all this uh, axioms um, that I put there. We're going to have natural and direct encodings and a simple criteria for calculation. So as I said, more or less, I mean, this is a work that has been you know, doing for we have been doing this for a long time now, and uh, it's based on lots of works. Of course, the first one is with Dale, but then it comes Giselle and Vivek that we work with sub, sub exponentials, and then uh, with Bjorn. With so Bjorn, with Bjorn, uh, Bjorn was the so responsible for us to understand these two first things here uh, that will be um, sequence systems that are not you know sequence based systems, extensions and sub exponentials that are not only weakening contraction and uh, promotion and derivation. Right, so let's do it. So uh, first, so the first thing is that, you know, when, when we talk about, when we talk about, um, oh, okay, linear logic is not enough for uh, encoding or specifying systems, or for example, modal system is a complete failure Please don't, don't blame linear logic. I mean, linear logic has nothing to do with that. The problem is the object lo level logic. So uh, the model, uh, normal, normal model logic systems uh, based on sequence systems, they are messy. And uh, please, I mean, linear logic is not messy. So don't, 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 don't expect linear logic to, you know, to be able to handle all the messy stuff in the world, right? So as I put before and now, I'm coming back to two-sided sequence for the object level only to be, um, so I'm going to be modular. Everything I'm going to say is going to work well for classical model logics and um, intuitionistic, uh, intuitionistic logic. No intuitionistic model logic, but intuitionistic logic. So, uh, so this is the rule for K. So uh, I don't need the, the diamond anymore because you know we're two-sided. So, um, in K, bottom up, what you do is you promote the box on the right, but you have to forget about the, the rest of the boxes. You can see this rule. So this is a single rule, but you can see this rule as an infinite, infinite set of rules, as Vansin uh, uh, said. Uh, you could actually you know, uh, promote the, 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 the formula on the right and then choose how many formulas on the left you want to promote, right? Um, so the idea is to really to replace this K, this one uh, rule K or this infinite uh, K and rules with two 
one for box left and one for box right, and that's it. So, but the sequence systems, they are not in, they're not, uh, you know, enough for doing this kind of things. I mean, they are not, uh, you cannot do that with uh, sequent um, formalism. So you have to enhance a little bit the uh, sequence systems. So this is the, so this is the, the goal of having things like, for example, nested systems or hyper sequence and this kind of things. So today I'm going to talk about a very simple one. It's the same as two systems of Massini, Guerrini and uh, uh, Martini, but with a, you know, with a better presentation, let's say, and uh, this uh, enabled to us to do lots of things with that thing. So, so when you have a better notation, you can enhance the, the work that can be done over it, right? So instead of having, and it's really simple. So instead of having sequence, I'm going to have a list of sequence uh, as nodes and, and and that's it. So what the rules they are going to do is to, to, to change this, uh, this list bottom up, okay? So now we're going to have two rules for box. Uh, one um, will be the box right that is going, the only thing it's going to do is to create bottom up always, to create another component and move the formula there. You forget about the box because this is how K works. And the, uh, the box left, well, what's going to do is to, uh, it's going to upgrade, let's say, uh, the, 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 the F that is boxed on the left, but to, to, to a next level, but then you forget about the, the box. So non-persistent boxes. So now you have two rules, you have right and left, right? Um, so this is what we're going to do with a modal logic uh, linear nesting system for modal logic. So the box right creates another nesting, the box left just move the formula on the left there, and then you forget about the box. Uh, in, in this work, uh, we, we're not going to need, so this is a nice result. So for all the, the logics I'm going to talk today, we don't need to take care of this, uh, the, 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 you only need to take care of the two last components, right? And uh, the, actually this, this, all these components, what they measure, what, uh, what they do is to, to uh, keep track of the history of the uh, backwards proof search. So it's only that. But uh, the, 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 the systems we're going to do today, you only need the two uh, last steps you did at most, okay? So instead of having, you know, keeping track of all the, all the components, all the history, I'm only going to have the last two at most, okay? So box is going to be like this. I mean, I can or not have something before, doesn't matter. If I have something, it's going to be only one. And then I move up creating another one and then I forget about my history. So I trust the history. And box left is going to have only two uh, components. So box left, it's just, I, I take the formula box left and then I move up uh, with F and that's the thing. So all the systems I'm going to deal uh, with today, they have, have this, uh, I can do that, so it's okay. There's, there's some that you cannot, but uh, I'm not going to talk about them. And then I'm, I put here some examples. So for classical logic, you don't need, you don't need history. So classical logic, everything is inside the sequence system. So you don't, know, you don't need to move to uh, linear nested, okay? You could, I mean, you can have a, a history before, but you don't need it. You're never going to move to another level. If you are into synistic logic, and this is multi-conclusion into synistic logic, then you do, you do need the history. So uh, the trick, so the, the, the box uh, for into synistic logic is the implication uh, right. So if you have implication on the right, what you're going to do is create an R, a, a new component and move F and G there as you would do with uh, implication right rule in sequence calculus. And what, uh, what you do in, 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 in the synistic logic is that you have a lift rule that it's like the box uh, there, but only persistent. Uh, if you have a formula on the left, you can upgrade this formula to the next level. Next level. Formulas on the right, you cannot, okay? So this is uh, sound and complete with respect to uh, multi-conclusion um, um, multi to synistic uh, logic. The rule for, I just put here the rule for implication left is the same as, as the rule for implication left in classical logic. I observe that I'm, I'm taking it um, multiplicative as Gensen did, uh, by the way. Modal logics, we already saw this, but you know, uh, we saw this one. So we saw that box right creates another, another component and put the formula there 
while a box left, um, just move the formula without the box to upgrade or lift to another component, right? But then now we are going to have also D, um, D is seriality, so uh, box implies diamond. So what D is going to be, so D is the star, uh, is the one that's going to be promoted. So you create another component with a box on the left and then you put the formula there. Uh, T is the relation, the same. So if you have a box formula, you just uh, copy without the box. I should have copied, but uh, well, lack of space, I didn't, so. And four is the pers persistent uh, left um, box. So you can upgrade the box formula and you keep the box formula, so it's persistent. So these are examples of linear nested systems. They're really easy. I mean, it's the same as sequence. The only thing is that from time to time, you're going to upgrade or lift or move to another component. And uh, you can do it uh, you know, one at a time and it works really, really nice. And when you move, the only thing you can do is to move you know, box formulas or left formulas in the case of intuitionistic logic. And there's nothing else you can do because, because the, the classical, uh, the propositional rules, you can only apply in the last component. So this is the thing. So you have a kind of, it's not a focusing, but you, you have a kind of normal uh, forms uh, for, for all these examples. Well, the good thing is that, you know, all these examples that I put and more, uh, they actually, they normalize the sequence calculus. So what, I, what I'm going to do is nothing else than I put this in one direction, but I can do it in the other direction as well. So what do we, we do when you create another, you, you take, for example, um, implication right, you create another component and put F and G there, but then you can lift all the, the formulas in your context. So you lift F, everything there. This is going to be the same thing as applying uh, implication right rule in the system where you have multiple con multiple co conclusion in intuitionistic logic. So it's, it's the same thing. I put in one direction, but you can do it in the other direction. The, uh, this direction is easy. The other direction, you, do, you, you use normalization of groups. So it's, it's easy as well. So it's one to one. And this is important because you know both uh, they, they have the same meta level properties because you can do you know you, you can translate them using normalization. So and the nice thing is that uh, linear nested systems for uh, for uh, for intuitionistic logic um, multiple con multiple conclusion intuitionistic logic you can specify in vanilla linear logic you don't need sub exponentials of course. You need the components, so you're going to, to use labels, right? So it'll be to the same of using labels here in a, in a sequence system. So it'll be the same thing. So you, you don't need sub explanations for that uh, if you use labels. And, uh, and the linear nested is going to entail a very nice uh, meta level uh, criteria for uh, cut elimination. So uh, this is, go I'm going to move uh, quite fast in this now, um, not because of anything, just because, you know, uh, let's go to the specification uh, while we can. So um, uh, the thing that I kind of, uh, I, 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 uh, I, I've hidden from you is that at the meta level, I'm also going to use um, linear nested system. So, in both in the object level and in the meta level, I'm going to use linear nested systems. And, and for that, of course, I need a linear nested system for linear logic. And so this was the work that uh, with uh, Carlos and I did with uh, Bjorn in uh, LPAR 17. Uh, that would be like, you take the, the rules that you already have for, uh, for K and uh, you do the same for uh, linear logic, well, more or less. Actually here, I should have put the one for S4. Um, yeah, there's a, a diamond here missing, but well, anyway. So it's the same thing. So instead of box, you put banks. And instead of uh, diamond, you put question mark. And you have the same thing. The only difference is this. So linear logic is, um, uh, resource conscious, so you have to be careful about the history. So you can not have a history before. You have to erase, you have to be able to erase all your past history. Otherwise it's not going to be sound, okay? So this is the, whole, the only difference that, between the two systems. 
both. So then uh, we can talk about multimodalities. So uh, as I said, uh, multimodalities, uh, you can do that in modal logic, in classical modal logic, you can do that in, in uh, linear logic. So K is just a distributivity of box with, with respect to implication. D, as I said, this box implies diamond. T is, uh, is uh, reflexivity, so it's a uh, box implies the formula. Four is transitivity, so it's a uh, the box is persistent, right? So we're going to have the same thing in linear logic. The only thing is that, you know, I, as I am in one-sided, I just put the things in one-sided. So this is really distributivity of uh, bang with respect to implication. This is really bang implies question mark. This is really the relation. And this is really um, that uh, bang implies bang bang, okay? So this is what K, D, T, and four are in linear logic. So um, I'm, I'm going to work with uh, linear logic plus sub exponentials, but not everything. So we don't need, you know, to kill uh, an ant, we don't need, you know, a cannon. Uh, we need, you know, just a piece of rock. And so this is what we're going to do. So instead of talking about, you know, infinite cases of sub exponential, blah, we're going to have only nine. Okay, so these are the ones we're going to deal with. And here is the order partial order that we're going to give to them. So let me read that uh, to you. So it's going to be simpler. So you have K, that'll be the sub exponential that what? That assumes K, right? With what is K is this thing here uh, on the top. And everything is going to be unbounded. Uh, uh, we, could, we, we could handle things also without weakening contraction. But for this work, we, we, we don't need to be that strict. So just to simplify things, I put weakening contraction on everything. And so K has K. L is something that we call local, that you know, you're going to have only, it's like a sub, it's like an exponential, a normal linear logic exponential. It has weakening contraction and you can you can do dereliction. And that's it. So it has these three things here. And then now here I put this uh, this uh, sub exponential that I call D. D is what? This D is D. Uh, this uh, seriality here, but also has K. So this is the, so when you move up, everything that it had before, you continue to have plus something else. So D has K, weakening contraction, plus K, plus D. Four has weakening contraction, plus K, four, plus four. T has weakening contraction, plus K, four, plus T. So here you have the relation, four you have persistent, and D you have uh, seriality. And then you can mix, that, mix them. So you can have KD4, KTD, or KT4, that'll be S4, for example, right? And then you have omega, and omega has everything. Omega is the, 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 the sub-exponential we're going to, uh, to put the theory on it. So you can do whatever with that. So it's going to propagate uh, on, on things. And I'm not going through this, so don't be scared. So I'm not going to you know, keep saying rules and blah, 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 blah. Just to say that if you want to, so the system is cute. It's nice. It's a, the you have a, so it's a, you have a local system for linear logic with sub exponentials with that set sub exponentials that I put there, uh, and then you can do focusing on that. Uh, propose a focus system for that. It's not complicated. The only thing is that now instead of having two phases, you have three. So you have a negative and a positive phase as a normal uh, focus system. Uh, but you have also exponential phase uh, that would be saying, okay, I'm moving from com one component to the other. So this is the whole thing. So you have the sequent, uh, the sequent focus phases that's normal ones that we had before, plus the, the phase where you have to move things between component or create another component. And so this, are, this is the focusing for linear nested. Uh, you, you have just an, an extra phase. And I'm not going through this. So people that know focusing and know what I'm talking about is going to read this and say, oh yeah, sure. People that never saw this before is going to say, <laughs> so don't worry. So uh, the only thing that I want to, to, uh, to, to tell you is uh, two things that first, this is really the promotion rule the, or the, the bang uh, right rule. You create another component and you move up, but then you are in a, uh, you are in a exponential phase. And in the exponential phase, the only thing you can do is to move formulas from one component to the other, just as before. And then at some point when you 
you're done moving things, then you finish and then you're in a negative phase again. So this is the whole, this is the dynamics of the proofs. They are going to be this way always. And uh, this formulas here, you have three formulas for in question mark because you have uh, K, four and D. They all uh, do something with sub with this exponentials. And as in sub exponential linear logic, I'm not going to enter into details. You can only move things from one component to the other, or you can only promote the things when you promote you, when you have a bigger information moving to a smaller information. So this is the only thing we have to to to, to keep in mind. So moving from one component to the other only if the component is labeled with something that's smaller uh, with respect to the thing that I want to move. So this is the only thing you have to to be careful with. Okay, so I just put here an example, but as, as I said, I'm not going, I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep going in a less boring and less bureaucratic kind of talk and more, you know, just explaining more or less what uh, these things are. So here is just an example of the di dynamics of the proofs. So here's the proof of uh, four of, of the um, uh, axiom four, okay, that we had before. So what you do is you, you go to the negative phase and then you're going to store things and then you have to focus on something. And then you go to the exponential phase and then you finish this exponential phase, then you store things. And then you may have to do all, it all over again until the point where you only have um, atoms uh, and you have one atom and then the negated uh, this atom and everything else is forgotten and then you can finish the proof. So this is, a, is, this is the dynamics of the proofs using this system. First negative phase, then positive phase, then exponential phase maybe, and then you come back to negative phase and then you go. Right. <laughs> so um, let me tell you how we specify these things using linear logic. It's pretty easy uh, and pretty, uh, how can I say that, intuitive. Uh, so, it's, so you take a, an object level, uh, logic and then you take a sequent in this and then you're going to specify the sequent as a multi set of atoms in in the meta level that will be linear logic with something else and uh, these brackets down or up just say if the formula that i had here they are on the left so bracket, brackets down it's uh, you have this uh, mnemonic for left and the up, you don't have it, but well, it's not left and it's right, right? So uh, brackets up is right and brackets down is left, okay? So this is the way you specify things. So pretty easy. So it's just one function, uh, natural, direct. You don't have to do anything or to think about anything. Then how to specify formulas, uh, sorry, rules. Uh, it's easy as well. So uh, you specify as a read, so from F, on the right, you're going to have F or G on the right. So this is pretty easy and standard. You're going to use implication and, uh, and atom. Right? But as we don't have implications, I'm going to write everything like one-sided. So instead of implication, we have uh, negation and tensor because we're negated. So we're going to take off the implication and put everything on the, on the right. So Everything is going to be ex existentially quantified and you have negation of the axioms and the theory actually, because you're going to put everything on the right. So this is the, the spirit of this is that you're going to consume F or G moving bottom up to produce uh, either F if you are in this group or G if you are in this group, okay? This, uh, the, the, the disjunction left is easy as well. You're going to consume F or G. So you're moving bottom up again to produce F and to produce G on the left, each one in one, um, in one premise, okay? So here you have two premises. Here you have one premise, but you have two rules. So you have to choose which one you're going to use. And this is really easy. So to prove that I'm not going through this as well, but you know, this, this little derivation here just proves that the adequacy of this. It means that if I decide to apply the rule in the object level, it's the same as focusing on this clause, one of that, I think I put the second, no, the first one. Focusing on this, on the meta level. So object level, I apply the inference, inference rule. Meta level, I focus on the clause specifying that rule. And in one step, I'm going to 
move to the premises here. And uh, this is uh, what's called adequacy. Okay, so you can do that for classical logic, for intuitionistic logic, for modal logic. So I'm going to tell you how you do that for that in a while, in a short while. But before, uh, if you notice, so if I have for classical logic, I have this kind of rules here, I need contraction, right? So yeah, so, you, so we're going to have explicit contraction and weakening at the object level. And uh, the, the way you deal with them is having positive and negative formulas, uh, um, positive and negative rules like this. Uh, so the positive rule is this one that um, you're going to consume f on the left and you're going to produce f on the left, but with a sub exponential in front of it. So you're going to become this thing classical. So f was a formula that was in the linear context, so it was a linear context. And then you're going to substitute this for um, classical uh, formula, let's say. Okay. But with things, uh, so it can be classical, but it can be more than classical because I can put an I there. And so it can behave like any axiom that we had before. So the good thing is, is that when you assume these two things, so the, 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 the formulas on the left, they are, um, they are equivalent to their question mark ones and the formulas on the right are equivalent to the question mark ones, okay? And this is parametric on the, on the sub exponential uh, we have here. And uh, if you only have weakening contraction, then you cannot move this from component to component. But if, if you have, for example, four, so I, I have G on the left, and then I can use uh, pause, and then I'm, I'm going to move this G to the context T4. So now I can use T and I can use four, for example. And then if uh, at, some at some point I create another component, I can pass this formula to the other component, right? If you're local, if you only have weakening contraction, weakening contraction don't move between components, but for K, they do, okay, and D, they do. So this is a very nice and parametric way of dealing with, um, with contexts, uh, classical and also modal. So the way we, we we're going to, uh, the way we uh, encode implication in intuitionistic logic is this one. So I'm not going to enter into details. Just note, note here that here we, you have a bank T4. So actually, uh, implication right really behaves like four or S4. Okay, T4 has K as well. So it's K T4. So this is the thing. Implication and S4 has, has this thing in common, of course. We all know that. It comes from semantic. And you can prove that uh, MLJ is an, an adequate with this specification. And you have post T4 and you have neg, local neg. It means that rules, that formulas on the left are going to move between components and formulas on the right, they are not. They are going to keep in the common component they are. You can contract, weak, weaken the formula, blah, but you cannot move it, okay? With model rules, it's even, more amazing. So it doesn't matter the modal rule you are on, those normal ones, right? The, the box right and left, they are always specified the same. So this means that you're, if the box is on the left, you're going to consume it and you're going to produce a formula on the left. The only thing is that this formula is going to be marked with a question mark. Which one? Depends on the logic you are. And bank and the uh, um, box on the right is, is bank bank with the sub exponential which one depends the the, the on the uh, object level um, um, system you are okay and you can prove easily adequacy of all the systems all these normal model systems that I, I'm talking about okay? a nice observation is that they all have the same encoding the, the encoding is exactly the same the only thing that changes is the, this I here that can be four or T4 or D or D4 or K, depending on the logic you're modeling. This is the whole difference. But then you see these two formulas, they are dual. I have question mark and left, and here I have bank and right, and they're really duals of each other. So we came back to duality all over again, again since duality, okay? So I'm going to, to skip this one. And just to come back to, to, to come to the end of my talk is that, so now that we specify this using linear logic with this nice exponentials, we can specify cut and cut has no sub exponentials. Cut is 
plain vanilla linear cut. And cut says only that if you have F on a formula on the left and you have a formula on the right, you're just going to consume them all and uh, put bottom on, on, the, um, on the place of it. Or looking bottom up from nothing or from bottom, you have F on the left and F on, F on the right, okay? Um, you, so now it's the part of the paper that is really too technical. So I, I, I decided not to, you know, to, to put any of this, the details on how, um, what are this, the, 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 the you know, qualities that the meta, the, the object level logic has to have in order to be able to be specified, blah, blah. But at the end, if you can do that, if you can take an object level logic and you specify it, uh, then you're going to have clauses like this. You're going to have, um, for a connective star, you're going to have a, a head that's going to be consumed. And then you're going to produce a bottom on the left and you're going to produce a bottom on the right, let's say, okay? And cut coherence is the same as we had in the paper with Dale. So if from bottom, if from uh, body left and body right, you produce nothing, then this is cut coherent. And then of course you can guess that the main result is if the system, the specified system, is cut coherent, then uh, it has cut elimination. Okay, so again, we have a meta level property that would be cut coherency. Uh, we specify the logic logical system in there. If it has this property, then it has cut elimination down there. Okay, so this is the thing. So this is the dynamics of the thing. So I think that uh, this is it. So I'm um, more or less on time. I'd say um, just to conclude. So in to, just to wrap up, in a nutshell, we have extended the criterion that we had for uh, cut elimination and linear logic that uh, Dale and I had in the 2013 paper. Um, we moved from uh, linear logic to cell and uh, we allowed cell to have modal behaviors other than just weakening contraction and promotion and dereliction. Uh, we establish a simple uh, criterion for proving uh, culmination for a um, um, very large now class of sequence based systems. And uh, this criterion, they are nice because they're simple and then really reflect the duality of rules. There is, if you have a body left and you, you negate this, then this is going to be equivalent to body right, right? And this is really the spirit of culmination. So we could move up to sub exponentials, but back in the simplicity and uh, capture the, the really the spirit of culmination again. Um, some real, little discussion. First one is that comparing with, with uh, other things we've done. So with uh, the paper with Dale, of course, we move it up because we now we can capture more things uh, than that. Uh, but with the paper with uh, Vivek and uh, Giselle, uh, there we specify things using cell. Um, and now we're different uh, because uh, the, the system we have here is greater than cell in the sense that there are logics that you cannot capture in cell. So for example, K, and we can hear. On the other hand, uh, the culmination results, they do not extend the ones in the, the paper I have with uh, Giselle and Vivek because we're focusing on that particular class of sub-exponentials. And uh, for this class of sub-exponentials, what we did is to show that the simplicity of the, the work uh, I had with AO is recovered. And uh, you use things in a very natural way. So the, the, the key thing for, for the, 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 the paper is modularity and it's everywhere. It's in the object level, it's in the meta level, it's in the encodings, everywhere, okay? And uh, talking about modularity, so this was only, a, we're only able to do that because we really moved um, beyond, let's say, sequence systems. So linearness, the locality of rules, they're really the key for having all this modularity. Uh, in this way, and this is really nice, at least I think so, is that uh, we could you know, handle modalities with modalities and let linear logic capture the rewriting rules or the inference rules at the object level as it should be. And this is vanilla linear logic. So vanilla linear logic is going to handle with the, with the inference rules while um, models in, in um, sub-exponential linear logic is going to, to handle the modalities of the object level logic. And, uh, and so um, 
yeah, and, and this was done in a very parametric way. So you don't change the encodings, you don't don't change pause and neg, you don't change anything. The only change the only change you do is the sub explanation that you put in there. Everything else is just the same. You can copy and paste. And actually, this talk was a copy and paste all over uh, of uh, you know encodings and everything. Uh, the, the the way I put I mean uh, the sub explanations in uh, SLL really reflect the pre 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 models of the the logics uh, uh, we are dealing with, so that's not a surprise. For example, that S four and uh, intuitionistic logic has the same they have the same behavior. Of course, they do, right? And uh, so this is the thing. And just to finish, finish uh, what we plan to do. So as I said, Bruno is. Um, a PhD student, a Carlos PhD student. So he's going to formalize everything Coq. <laughs> so they actually, they already done the, the, the trick with, uh, with uh, Amy, uh, when Amy felt he, they, so Carlos, Amy and um, Bruno, not me, I and mean, I'm not capable of doing that. Uh, they formalized the results of the uh, TCS paper with Dale, um, the 2013 TCS paper with, with Dale in Coq. So what Bruno is going to do in his uh, PhD thesis is to uh, move one uh, level up and formalize this. And this is non-trivial, like really non-trivial because you know it's higher order kind of uh, quantification we're dealing with here. So this is, not, this is not easy. It's easy for me in a piece of paper. So we always have this fight at home. To, I, I tell Carlos, but this is really easy, look. And he's like, yeah, try to, try to put this in cock, formalize this. So yeah. Um, we also want to move to non-normal model logic. So this is something that I really want to do. What does it mean to put non-normal non, non modalities in sub-exponential, sub-structural sub logic, right? Explore a bit the failure cases. So you can, suppose that you can really, you can uh, specify and blah, blah, and, uh, and then you don't have duality. So what's the reason for that maybe you're not using actually so this is the thing so maybe you're not using the right framework at the beginning right so maybe the problem is not you is the framework that you have there it's the neighbor uh and uh we would like to you know push on this kind of investigation to towards necess necessary conditions for termination uh let me say a word or two to finish finish about frame other frameworks and elimination that i've i've been working with okay i know that there are many there uh so giselle for example has a nice uh, paper in each carnal um about an implementation that she she made with a student uh, um, i'm not sure i don't think that they have elimination yet but they are moving towards that so the things that I've been working with. So I've been working with this, as I said, since my uh, since my PhD, and this is really beautiful because the criteria is it's beautiful, it's simple, it's simple is beautiful, uh, but somehow unsatisfying because you know you need uh, you need encoding and uh, and the meta level and the object level they are distanced from each other. So uh, it's sometimes it's even impossible to do this encoding. So for example, K in minimalogic you cannot uh, unless you put labels, of course. And uh, Carlos Camilo Rocha and I, we're, we've been working on uh, what they call uh, epsilon distant um, meta level uh, using rewriting. And uh, this is really strong because we can specify the inference rules as a rewriting uh, step. And this is really easy. Uh, it's like programming, but it's not. <laughs> Don't you kill me? Uh, but nevertheless, it's not satisfying at all, at all because you don't have this beauty you cannot see the things happening at the meta level right i mean the meta level uh, criteria that you're going to get is really more operational and less abstract than the one we have here so this would be the difference between the two approaches i've been working with and so that's it thank you thank you elaine um mm -hmm. please join me to uh to give an applause to Elaine using the virtual clap button. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you can find it. It's in this reaction um, button on the panel. Um, so we have time for maybe one, one or two quick questions. Um, does anyone want to ask any question? I see your hand raised. Uh, yeah, Dale, 
um, please go ahead. Hi there. Yes, uh, very nice talk, Elaine, thanks. Um, I just wanted to understand, I should probably know this from maybe earlier papers of yours, but the, um, the rules K and D look a lot like what I've seen for like soft linear logic and elementary linear logic. Yes. Is there, uh, right. uh, so you've, you've studied that, you know that this is the connection. Yes, okay, so good. KD is elementary. And right. uh, yes, KD is elementary. And uh, KD is uh, actually, I, yes, I didn't talk about elementary linear logic, light linear logic or soft linear logic, but we could also handle them. Uh, oh. Using sub exponentials. Okay. Not That's not quite. I mean, elementary. Yes. Uh, for soft, uh, for light and soft linear logic, you need something else. But uh, it, it's doable. I mean, I could do. It. I think it was important. Okay. Yeah, but you're right. KD you. is elementary linear logic. Okay. Um, so just a quick question, Elaine. Unless there is anyone else wanting to ask questions. Uh, so, um, so you earlier showed the uh, linear nested sequence calculus, right? Um, so, is it easier to prove cut elimination in the linear nested calculus? Because I've I've done a lot of work in nested sequence calculus, and uh, it seems like you know making that kind of restrictions usually complicates cut elimination a lot. So, yeah, right. you're completely right. Yeah. So, no, it's not easy at all. So. Uh, this is this is something that I should be right. I mean, I should highlight this. Uh, in this way, we're 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 proving elimination for linear nested, and this is not an easy task at all. But uh, for doing that, it's it's a kind of you can say it's cheating or whatever. So <laughs> when we deal with this, uh, what we call end active, only you know caring about the two last components, we have a kind of focused way of applying the rules, if you wish. And then the cut can only be applied on the less component. So it's more or less, it resembles more the elimination for sequence systems. Although you, you may have to handle different components and blah, blah. So, but yeah, so the, the, the whole thing about this paper. So I think that the most, the two most difficult things about this paper are first, to do the right encoding. I mean, to get the spirit of the codings. Second, to prove that the proof of culmination that we have at the meta level really, really corresponds to the proof that you have at the uh, object level. And for that, we had to establish a uniform kind of way of proving culmination for the object level as well. So to, to see that things would work, not to, you know, to be in a case by case analysis. So, so yeah, you're right. I mean, this is not, this is not trivial like at all, but. Um, Oh, thanks for that. But but it's uh, easier than nested. So but the nested is messy because you know you move really deep inside and you can cut things with you know that are in one nesting with things that are in a complete different nesting and then it's it's a mess. Sonia now knows better <laughs> than I how, how this works. But here yeah, we have uh, we have cut in a very co well controlled way. So if I would have to do that with nestings like nestings, then I wouldn't know how to. Uh, thanks, Elaine. Um, so I'm mindful of, of, of the time. Um, so, but we have one uh, other question. So perhaps if you could give a quick response. So this is from Chris Martins. Uh, sure. Chris is asking whether is there any straightforward relationship between this system and Prisma at all adjoins logic. Which uh, one? Chris, if you want, you can speak directly um, to Elaine. Yeah, sure. Um, thanks for the talk. Uh, I was just wondering if, if you'd seen this work on, um, oh. I'm familiar with it through uh, Fr uh, Frank Fenning um, primarily, but uh, the adjoint logic presentation of, of sub-exponentials through um, this kind of, yeah, yeah, representing linear and modal logics through uh, adjoints. Yes, uh, so I've seen this work, but I like a, a long time ago, I mean, one year ago or one year and a half ago. So I don't remember the, the specifics of adjoint logic, but yeah, at some point I thought there was some intersection and you're really right to point me uh, this out. Uh, I have to establish better the, the but it's not the same thing, um, but it has some relations here and there. Yes, you're completely right, yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I have to come back to that. I completely forgot. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. 